There are fresh agitations over the zoning formula proposed or proposed by the governor uh, of Ifanyi Ogwani led People's Democratic Party zoning committee. Now, reports are telling us that while the party members in the north are yet to agree on which zone should produce the next national chairman, the predominant opinion favors the North Central. It was also gathered that party members uh, from the South are not comfortable with the decision to zone the chairmanship to the North. A member of the party's National Executive Committee who spoke on condition of anonymity for confer uh, had confirmed uh, the development. Another top-ranking party source who also spoke on condition of anonymity said that even in the North, some tendencies within the zone are insisting that the contest be left open instead of it moved to micro zone uh, or to the north central. Well, to break down all of this and talk about what's happening in, within the PDP is Biodu Shomi. He's a political analyst. Thank you very much, Mr. Shomi, for joining us. It's my pleasure. At some point, it gets very confusing when every single person is asked to throw their hat into the ring. Um, most people would say that that's the best way. And in other words, may the best man win. But we also know that the Uche Sekundus drama or the woes of his chairmanship has dragged on for so long and it's also part of the mix uh, and the confusion that's happening within the PDP. So let's start with him. Um, the seat of the chairmanship right now in the party is still under contention and now we're seeing that many people have eyes, their eyes on that seat but then certain people in the north are saying that they want it to be thrown open so that anybody can decide to be the chairman of the party. But again, we also understand that within the party manifesto, there are rules. If a person from a particular zone is the party chairman, then of course, automatically, the presidential tickets cannot also come from a similar zone. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Can I, can I go on? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, what you see playing off initially when the a section of the uh, PDP pushed to remove the conduct is over the presidential elections in 2023. Uh, a section of the party desirous of shifting the chairmanship to to the to the north, you know, on purpose, so that they could uh, present a candidate from the south. While that push was going on, knowing that the Condors would not bow out easily, it was very important for them, you know, to ensure that uh, whether the Condors leaves or not, they then had to meet again and rezone the party, chairmanship, you know, to the north. Again, it's against the currency of what is going on within the country. Uh, the PDP again rezone the chairmanship uh, back from the south to the north. After doing that, we now have, we thought it's all settled. But until when the northern governors met with their emir and took a decision that the south will not necessarily have the ticket, and more so, uh, they would rather field a northern candidate. You know, believing that the majority of the vote uh, that will be casted, you know, in the party will be in favor of a candidate from the north. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is not acceptable to the other faction uh, within the PDP. So, invariably, many threaten to leave over that. So, given that situation currently, what they're now trying to do is to see how to manage the crisis by throwing up the tickets open, either for the chairmanship or the presidential candidate. Hoping that at the end of the day, the North will favor, you know, uh, a Southern candidate to emerge as a candidate in order to ensure that a Northerner emerges as a candidate of the PDP. You and I know who the Northerner is, uh, but uh, there's a bigger problem, which is the cohesion and the unified position of the Southern government. Mm -hmm. If they should insist, that except the candidate comes from the South, then we are heading for a major crisis. The what? same game is played itself out in a way in the in the in the APC, you know, where um, some of the governors are already saying 
particularly from the north, that it is not yet given that his Sasana will emerge as a candidate. So mm. what is playing up in PDP is, you know, at a higher level, is more intense than the crisis within the UPC. Obviously, they have not been able to manage that. They've already created a factionalized party by ensuring that two chairmanship candidates are floating somehow, mm. hoping that the court will eventually resolve this. But be, be it as it may, what is clear is that is the zoning or whoever will emerge as a presidential candidate, you know, that is in contention. And I those who are insisting that it has to come from the South are very active within the party. They have asked some of the governors, you know, including Wiki, you know, saying that they don't even know how to campaign for a Northern, uh, to sell a Northern candidate, mm. um, after Buari to, um, um, to their own, um, uh, voters. And don't forget, PDP has a zoning formula. They've always been rotating it. Yes. So it will be very strange if they depart from that. But when you look at the, Currency of thinking within the country and the sharp division within the country, one would have expected that the Northern governors would settle, you know, for a certain presidential candidate. But it remains to be seen uh, whichever way it will go. I, I spoke with the Deputy um, National Publicity Secretary uh, for the PDP last week, and he did say that the governors, the Southern governors, um, do not necessarily have a right to dictate to the party where they would want to zone the presidential ticket to. That of course, that naturally they have a right of say, but they do not necessarily or cannot, in fact, if I'm quoting him directly, um, twist, arm twist the party uh, to change things in their favor. But you're saying that these people are very influential as to um, their, their stands and what they're asking for. But he, on the other hand, is saying that the, the, these governors do not have that kind of right. Again, he pointed to the fact that these southern governors were not only from the PDP, but they were also from the APC. So for him, he said it was just the mere sentiments that they were expressing. But you're saying that this is a, a very good stand and it might have uh, an effect of sorts on the party's decision um, you know, later on. Well, um whether the Southern governors have a right to demand or not, whether the Northern governors are right to say that well, they need to lobby, not to demand that the South should uh, present the next presidential candidate. The fact of the matter is, what's on the ground in the country is that the country is so badly divided al along the North-South um, line, which is the fourth-fourth line. You also have a second fourth line, which is middle belt as of north. So the northern governors cannot assume that when it comes to voting or uh, seeking candidates, they are bound to have a unified north. I doubt that. I cannot see how autumn, even the position he has made very clear, you know, would go along with um, the voting for a northern presidential candidate. As a matter of fact, Middle Belt is also, you know, muddling up the waters by demanding that the Middle Belt has a right to present a presidential candidate. But they are conceding that to the South, that after the South, they should be the next one to go. So I think some of the daughter governors are also very apprehensive, uh, given what has happened under Buari's regime, you know, where ethnic division became so prominent to the extent that people are now um, agitating for secession. So they are also anxious about what will be the state of the country and their region if the country should split. Don't forget, the issue of the VAT is also there and the stamp duty, which in any case will make uh, fiscal federalism a reality. And because of that, many states in the North South, um, they, will be, um, they will not be able to pay their bills. So given that situation, they would rather have a situation where they have a presidential candidate from the north who is able to act as a leverage uh, that will enable them to maintain the system or negotiate a new VAT deal, which can now be submitted to the Supreme Court 
as a consent judgment. So these are the issues, you know, at play currently. And in closing, because we're almost out of time, there are certain people whose names have been thrown up in the midst of this agitations within the PDP, um, the likes of the former Senate President David Mark, um, Senator Tunde Ugbeha, uh, former governors of Kogi State, Idris Wada, Ibrahim Idris, and of course, Professor Jerry Ghana, uh, and former Niger State Governor Babangida Aliyu. Uh, and, and, and as you see, that list probably tilts to a certain part of the country, but uh, from the uh, analysis that you've given, which, pe which person, um, I mean, we're not speaking, speaking for the PDP, but um, from an outsider's view, who's more viable uh, or more of a person that would be picked, a better pick for that chairmanship position? For the chairmanship position? Yes. Well, uh, the, <coughs> the case is very clear. There are so many um, northerners also inching for the chairmanship position knowing that it will automatically mean the presidential candidate will be zoned to the south. Some of them have resigned to reality. They know that, look, when the issues are put on the table, eventually the moral way and the argument uh, based on the PDP constitution will ensure that the presidential candidate comes from the south. So they are also drifting along that line for that very position. The position of the chairman is so powerful, he's the one to sign the papers and forward the candidate, you know, to um, INEC, and they're fully aware of that. So given that situation, we are likely going to see the intensification of the battle on two fronts. One, the agitation, you know, to ensure that a Northerner or a Southerner, you know, becomes the presidential candidate is on one part, but the Shaban chief also is not going to be left uh, just like that. There will mm -hmm. be other contending forces that will come out uh, from the north. If you notice, so many people in the south seem not to be interested in the chairmanship of um, PDP. It's only one former governor that is being touted, you know, as um, a, a possible candidate. But so far, he has not indicated any interest in it. And therefore, um, one can safely conclude that uh, the decision uh, to pick the chairmanship for PDP would uh, really fall on the on the north. Okay. I cannot see anything, you know, happening on that because when it comes to voting, you are likely going to have a southern delegate actually voting for a okay. candidate from the north as mm. the chairman of PDP. So it's a kind of eye wire politics which they are all playing. Many of the key actors like Obeha, like David Back, they are also from the Middle Belt. They are not happy about what is going on, but they have not said anything over the years, you know, mm. about the division, the problem between the Middle Belt and the corner. So, so, I, guess, I, so to I guess we're going to keep our fingers crossed to see what happens in the coming days. Beg your pardon? I guess we'll keep our fingers crossed to see what happens in the coming days. Absolutely. Well. So, it just begins to be seen. It's better to keep unfolding as uh, things go wrong. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Be able to show me as a political analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. My we pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. We want to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of the conversation. We will take a quick break now to, sh to hear what Nigerians believe uh, the, region, um, the region where Nigerians think the party um, tickets should be zoned to. Of course, we're talking about the presidential tickets here. And when we come back, I'll be saying my goodbyes. Right now, to me, I have no any choice. But I need a good person to be lead by us. Honestly, sincerely speaking, as a good citizen of this country, I think the next president should come from the south. Although I'm from west, you understand, but I think the south deserves to lead us. We don't know what will happen, so I think we should give them a chance. So let's see come from the south, because the northerners have dominated Nigeria now for a while, and we are not seeing the impact of them. So. I don't want, let's try it another way and see how it goes. It doesn't matter where the president actually comes from, but the, uh, what matters is what is being done in the country. 
the 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 provisions, the empowerment, and the provision of job for the youth and everything. So whether you're from the north, the south, or the east, it doesn't matter as long as you provide what needs to be done in the country. What what is matter is the person that will take Nigeria to a greater level. No matter the zone it came from, whether from the north, south, east. So where is the matter? Another where is the matter? Another thing is, we are tired of this old man. We need youth. It's north and south. We supposed to be. Maybe that south can be Igbo, it can be Yoruba, but it's supposed to be south. Now, now this turn around, 2023, it's supposed to be south. To me, I prefer from the south, uh, because uh, the power has been given to them. I think uh, for the past uh, uh, eight years or thereabouts, Nigeria have not really achieved anything. So we want the president that will know that, yeah, let me fight for Nigerians. And this is what Nigerians are passing through. Uh, for example, the sake of the kidnappers and all, the president is there and is from the north. He has not done anything concerning this. So that's the reason why I said the president should come from the south. Well, that's the show for tonight. Let's keep our fingers crossed and see how events unfold within our major political parties as we look to 2023. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.